I'm vlogging here. Okay, are you excited? It's Father's Day. This is call? Daddy's breakfast. We're not done yet. We're gonna put the strawberries on top, remember? And then we'll put like a big glass of ice cold water. Quit eating guys strawberries. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Do you remember your songs that you're gonna sing today in church? I know one, one. but I don't know the other one. Uh -oh. I don't know any. You guys, come on! This is your debut. This Can is I your Father's the, Day debut, huh? Sing the song no, you, you know you're gonna do it later for the camera. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, do this one to see what we caught him. I'm not gonna show you what it is yet. You have to wait until he opens them to see what they are. <laughs> Yay, balloons! World's best dad, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that balloon is correct? Do you guys have the world's best dad? Number one, world's best dad. Actually, zero's the hero, so he's a zero. World's best dad. That's the first one. Really? <laughs> Hear that, honey? You are zero, the world's best dad. It's zero is a hero. Zero is a hero? Okay, cool. Princess Star said it. It means it's true. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do this, baby. Hey, Rock Tard, come on. Come on. Underwear boy. No hurry. Come here. We're going to give it to daddy. It's asleep. Morning, honey. Morning, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day! Happy oh. Father's Day! This is breakfast in bed? Yeah! Yes. And it's biting my hair. <laughs> Ow! And <laughs> hair biting in bed too. That Happy Father's delicious. Day! Hi! Father's Good Day! Morning. What did you tell your dad, you guys? Thank you, buddy! Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day, Dad! We love you! God. We love you! It's give Daddy kisses, Rock Tad! Ever! Give him kisses! I would give you a Oh, no. he's just gonna eat your breakfast for you, okay? <laughs> Rock Tad, he's gonna put one in my mouth. Thank you, guys. That looks delicious. Here, wow. let's give him heavy. <laughs> She's like, okay, it's heavy. Just take it. <laughs> Happy flipping Father's Day! Here, go put it on the thing for him. Yeah, put it on like the bucket. Set it right here. Hey, Ezekiel. Oh, I know. We're gonna fix you. We're gonna fix it. So I know a couple days ago in the vlog I told you guys that he wasn't feeling well. Well, it's been a couple days. He hasn't been eating very much or drinking very much, and he's been really lethargic, which is not normal for him. So I finally just called, and we got a vet appointment, and she said that she doesn't think it's parvo. That was my worst fear, is that it would be parvo. But she said she really doesn't think it's parvo because he's had all those shots very recently. But our poor little puppy's not feeling well. And Shay, yesterday, since it was Malachi's birthday yesterday, happy birthday, Malachi, um, he was like, maybe Malachi's haunting Zeke. <laughs> And he's like, you can't replace me. I'm sure that's not it. Hi, puppy. We love you. We're going to find out what's going on, okay? I love you. You're such a good boy. Okay, well, it was one of those appointments where we did not find out exactly what it is. We didn't pinpoint what it was. But we found out a lot of things that it wasn't. So it's not parvo. It does not parvo. That's good. Could be some intestinal thing. But their microscope wasn't working, so they couldn't check his fecal matter. I'm sure that was TMI. They're going to check that and then get back to me. We might need to give him some antibiotics. Other than that, it's either something he ate and this, this little bug will pass, or it's something that he swallowed and, and it's stuck in his intestines. But we're gonna give it a few more days to see if he passes anything and then we'll do x-rays. So I don't know, that was probably a lot of TMI for you guys. At least he doesn't have parvo, that's what I'm grateful for. Look at that chick, he's carrying two babies. Now there are three, there are three life forms on so that. We felt the hiccups today. Yeah, Colette woke me up this morning at like 6 a.m. Shay, Shay, you want to feel the baby? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I sure do. I'm so excited. Not like I've felt five other babies in your belly before. And he had the hiccups. A little baby had the hiccups this morning. We have stumbled across a mummy baby here on Venice Beach. It happens a lot. You go, you find syringes, bums, and mummy babies. I think he's awake, but he's just kind of chilling. Hey, buddy. You want to come swimming? Oh, it's so bright. No. Come forth, Lazarus. Come to the ocean. Want to go swim? No? All right. You stay in there. Okay, guys. It's Austin from the Nine Knolls. I'm taking over the Shea Charge channel. Just kidding. I was told to go film Shea because he's in the water. Here we go. Yeah. You guys gonna hop in? Go, go for it. The water's great. It's really nice. Hey. I'm this is for your channel. Your wife told me to come film you. She told you still film Shay. Yeah, yeah, so this is Shay, this is his channel. Alright, let me oh nice. Yeah. 
this is so Baywatch right now. Here, you want to do like a little slow mo, Rodney? You can yeah, put it in slow motion. I'd make out with him. No, I wouldn't. I would never right do that. Now. Prove it. Oh, ah. no, 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 I don't want to make out with him. Ah. Oh, my goodness. You're burying my children. I only have to deal with two of them now. <laughs> We and their get head. Car and drive home, and they wouldn't be able to get out. Can I get out now? You can try, try to get out. No, 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 no. Let me put 50 more pounds of sand no, on top. No. How does it feel? Does it feel comfortable though, like a blanket? No. no. It's just relax. Especially when I do this. I'm not seeing any movement. <laughs> wait, they're not. Wait, are you guys trying? <laughs> yes, there is. Your camera. Let's take a picture. Pretend like you're alone on the beach and you have to get out by yourself. Yeah, what if you? What if nobody was here? What would you do? Try to breathe all your air in and try to like open the cavity and then let it out and let sand try to fall behind you and try to get your arms up. You your act legs. like you've done this before. Try to. Oh yeah, I've, I've escaped from sand. My parents used to bury us all the time. They always try to get rid of us. We always got out. I'm gonna die. We might die actually. Oh. Look at you. You're doing it, Peter. What? Doing it, Peter. Get your arm out, Gavin. It's all about patience and not panicking. Oh, uh, we got a lap dog. Is that comfortable there, no, Suntard? Not. <laughs> Zeke okay. just sits wherever he feels comfortable, right which is normally on somebody's oh. lap. He has no idea <laughs> what a large, okay. obtrusive... Zeke poked my eye with his foot. Well, punch him back, dude. He's still a puppy. Don't punch him. <laughs> oh, that's bad fathering on Father's and Day. I, I did some bad fathering advice on Father's I'm Day. Not the first time. Oh snap. Okay, I'm gonna tell the kids a story. You guys wanna hear a story? Okay, so it's Father's Day and uh, I'm wearing my Captain America shirt and my brand new hat that I got for my Father's Day birthday and uh, ABC gave me this. I like it. And then Rock Turner, when he saw me, he's like, oh dad, Captain America. And he so goes, he thinks, oh cool dad. You like my Captain America shirt? Where's your clothes again? I'm not sure if you're familiar. Can this is my son Rock Turner. He doesn't wear clothes. Sorry. Okay, and he puts <laughs> his foot, his feet in your face. <laughs> okay, so the kids, I don't know why they said they want to know a story about a time when I lied. Where did, where did that come from? You, that you? said you, um, my mom was teaching my primary class tonight, today, so um, and she was talking about lying is not good. Right. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, I can tell a story when I lied, and I also asked She asked mom, me too, but I couldn't think of any because I'm a perfect child. Right. <laughs> And I said, I'm not going to tell them about when I lied because then they're going to grow up and be like, well, dad lied, so it's okay. So I'm not going to tell you guys. I've always made good decisions in my life. No. Nah. Why do you want to hear about when I lied? Because I want to know stories. I like stories. Like, if you teach me the lesson, then I will learn not to do it. Amen, sister. Give me five. What's the saying? What is it? Something like a smart man uh, makes a mistake and learns from it, but a wise man finds a smart man and learns from the wise, the smart man's mistakes. You guys have heard all that saying, right? Is that how it goes? No? Never heard it that way, but I get what you're saying. Anyways, you have the, the wise way to learn things is from other people's mistakes. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys about the story. One day, I wanted to go skiing. I was like a junior in high school, and I loved skiing. It was my passion. There's a naked baby oh, now. Oh, gosh. You <laughs> have to sit there, Steve. Well, I have to save the nakedness <laughs> from being exposed. It's harder to tell these stories when the camera's on for some reason. Okay, just tell the story. Okay, here's the story. When I was like a junior in high school, I wanted to go skiing so bad, and I love skiing. Skiing was like my passion. I felt like I was like spiritual about skiing. Like I was one with the mountain, and I was pretty good at it. Not gonna brag, but I was probably like the best one at my school. Anyways, so I asked my mom one day if I could go skiing, and she said no. Come here, I'm telling a story. So I asked my mom if I could go skiing with my friends, and she said no. And I was like, Mom, come on, tomorrow's going to be a great day. They're having like this deal in Salt Lake, and I want to go so bad. And she's like, no, Shay, you've missed too many days of school. You're not going to skip another day of school to go skiing. So I was like, Mom doesn't understand Why did me. you miss school? What do you mean? Why did you miss a couple of days of school? Because I'd gone skiing. Like, she had let me skip a couple of days of school to go skiing. 
Like on really good snow days, like it snow like seven inches and they didn't cancel school. And my mom knew how much I loved skiing, so she would let me skip school to go That's skiing. That's pretty nice. I don't know right. if I would do that. So I was like pushing my luck because I was like, and like I think I'd missed a few other days for like trips I went on with the family or something. So she's like, no, you've missed too many days of school. You're not going skiing. I was like, man, mom just doesn't understand. She doesn't get how much skiing means to me. Like it's such a part of my life. She just doesn't understand. And so what I decided that night is that I was going to sneak out of my room the next morning and You're instead so of bad. instead of going to school what I did is I wrote my mom I remember I wrote her this letter it's like mom uh, something to the effect of like you can't hold me back from my passion and I <laughs> I love skiing and Oh, some angsty so teenage sad. thing like I hope you can love anything in your life as much as I love the mountain and love <laughs> to ski. And this, That's really angsty. Yeah, it was pretty. I, I can't remember. I wish I, I I would love to have, and I wonder if my mom has that letter that I wrote. So <laughs> she's I left. waiting to give it to you and somebody else yeah. does something. <laughs> so because my mom would wake me up to go to school in the morning because I was a lazy butt, so she would always come in and wake me up. So when she woke up, came in my room that morning, I was gone. And I had a letter on my bed, and I had packed all my ski stuff, and I had went and met my friend Andy, and we went in my, and, and we met this other guy named Rick, and we went in his truck, and we drove to Salt Lake to go ski. And that wasn't in the day of cell phones, so she couldn't call me. There's no way that she could, like, come find me, because it was an hour and a half that drive away. That sounds so ancient. That was not in the day that of cell phones. That was not in the day of cell phones. No, we're not eating this licorice, bro. So, listen to what happened during the day, okay? So I left her this note, I snuck out my window, I remember I had my ski boots and my ski Did poles. Did you snuck out your windows onto the roof? No, my room was in the basement, so I like, went out That's funny that you wouldn't window. just pretend like you were going to school. Because I had all my ski equipment, and I had to leave. I left at like 6.30 in the morning, before my parents even woke up. I like got up early, got all my ski equipment, and then snuck out the window, and I remember walking over to my friends with all my ski equipment, and left the house. So we get in my friend Rick's truck, it was like this t Toyota Tacoma four-cylinder. It had these giant tires on it, which was ridiculous because the engine in this truck couldn't, it could barely go over 50 miles an hour. So normally what would have been an hour and a half drive took two and a half hours, and I had to sit in the back of this Tacoma that was like tiny. So it was like a two and a half hour drive. It was so uncomfortable. So it was like this miserable two and a half hour drive up to the mountain. We got to the mountain. It was a beautiful sunny day. I was like, my passion, man. This I'm going to go. I'm going to shred the mountain. The very first run, there was this huge <laughs> cliff. And I was like, I was like, you know, I, mean, I was like going extra big this day, extra crazy. Because I'm like, I'm here. I'm gonna, I knew I was going to get in trouble when I got home because I knew my mom and dad were going to be so pissed. And so I thought, I got to ski hard today. Today's my day to shred this mountain. The girls are like, what's it mean to shred a Come mountain? Here. So the very first run, very first run, I go off this huge cliff. And guess what happened? What? I broke my ski in half. <laughs> Literally, I landed on a rock and my ski broke in half. So, That's what happens when you disobey your mother and father. Come here, buddy. I'm telling a story. So, guess what I had to do the rest of the day? Because I didn't have any money other than the money that I used to buy my ski ticket, so I couldn't rent skis. I had to sit in the truck the rest of the day. So, I had to sit in the truck all day long, and I was miserable because then it was, like, hot, and then my friends, they went up and they skied all day long, and I, like, couldn't get any other skis, and I just sat there thinking, I'm in so much trouble. I'm going to be in so much trouble. So then, I got like half of a run. We went, it was, the day was over, it was time to go home. I had to sit in the back of this truck for another two and a half hours to drive home. And then walking in the door that night, I was in trouble. I got a truant, because I didn't show up, and then when the school called to tell my mom that I wasn't at school, she didn't like... She didn't an stand up for you. She didn't give me an excuse. She said, I don't know. He just left school. And so they gave me a truant. So then I had to go to Saturday school. And it was like the worst decision I ever made. <laughs> I got in this huge fight with my mom. I remember you I was like, it. I was like crying like, it was the worst day of my life. And she's like, well, serves you right. Huh. Serves you right. And she had no sympathy for me. And uh, that's what you get for lying and disobeying your parents. I'm never going to lie. <laughs> that's a good lesson to learn. Lesson. Learn from those that have already made the mistakes. Yep. Don't lie. I promise you guys, if you lie, you will regret it every single time. You'll regret it for many reasons. You'll regret it because you'll hurt people. 
you'll regret it because you'll have to remember your lie, you'll have to remember the story, and you'll have to always backtrack. Honesty, as Abraham Lincoln said, is the best policy. If you're always honest and you always tell the truth, then you'll never have anything to hide. Even when it's difficult, yeah, it's always worth it. Even when it's hard it. to tell the truth, because sometimes it is hard. But I promise you guys, if you tell the truth, you will never not be able to look at somebody in the eye and have confidence. And the truth oh, will set the, you free. The truth will set you free. And you'll never have to hide anything. And there's nothing better than feeling confident and knowing that what you're saying is the truth and that you're not deceiving anybody, and that you're not trying to lie to somebody and, and make somebody think something else. Mom, your and turn. You, and you know what else you can learn from that story? Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Listen, you think like that parents don't understand, and you think like, oh, mom and dad, they don't get it, they don't understand. I get it, man. I was a kid too. Believe it or not, I was a kid just like you, and I know what it's like, but your parents, they want what's best for you. That's why they tell you things. They want you to be happy. And so they've already gone through all those mistakes. So that's why we're trying to tell you guys. We're not just trying to like impose all these strict re regulations and rules on you guys because we're like, you know, Hitler. We want to like make you do what we want you to do. The reason that we ask you guys to do those things is so you'll be happy and you'll be healthy and you'll be successful. Right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? That's why we want you to brush your teeth. Watch your turn. <laughs> I still don't have any. You guys, honestly? Mom, I don't have any stories of me lying. Do you? I honestly don't think you do. do no, you I do. Any? Are you kidding me? Oh, well, what are they? Dad, you snuck out to go teeping once. That's when you had her first kiss. Her first time she made out with a boy is when she lied and snuck out, out to go toilet papering and kissed a boy. Out. One kiss does not constitute making out. Hussy. Okay, tell us <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us a story. I just told you a story. Another one. We're going to save my story for another day. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. That's enough love storytelling. You. Don't lie. I like stories. Don't lie. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. So have you ever lied? Be honest. Don't lie about not lying. If you've lied, then you got to tell the truth about the lie. Let's learn from each other. Leave your stories below. I want to read some of your little indiscrepancies, huh? I opened up my soul, exposed my tragic past. Let's hear some of your sordid tales, shall we? I think it'd be fun. We could read each other's mistakes in the comments and learn from each other. Thanks for watching today's vlog. Check out yesterday's vlog. I opened up all my Father's Day presents. I was really excited to get all some goodies goodies. Click on that Feeling Lucky button, you guys. We almost have the new Shea Beard to 100,000 views. I appreciate with a capital A P P, appreciate all your support. Check out what the Shade Tards are doing one, two, three, and four years ago today. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a happy Monday and a great week. Remember, it's up to you.